you've noticed that your engine is using more oil than usual. This is a video really about excessive oil consumption. What is excessive oil consumption? And what are the typical causes that mean your engine is going to be using more oil than usual? A lot of problems like this can be quite hard to track down because they can often be attributed to a variety of different sources. By getting a good overview of the possible causes for excessive oil consumption, you can get to the problem more quickly. You know which areas to check and you can rule out some of the less obvious ones straight away. How much oil is excessive? Well, it depends what car you've got and who you're talking to. The Volkswagen Group, for example, and some of their two litre TFSI engines say that one litre per thousand kilometres is normal. That's not excessive. Uh, I probably wouldn't agree with that, but according to their engines and their engine specs and their designs, they don't really want to know about excessive oil consumption unless you're exceeding this one litre per thousand kilometres. But in other engines, if I was topping up by more than, say, a litre or a quart between services, certainly every six, seven thousand miles, I'd want to investigate the possible causes of that. But every engine is different. Some engines, by nature of their design, will use more oil than other engines. Excessive oil consumption really has to be based on the baseline for your engine and your engine type. And even to a certain degree, the type of use that you put the engine to. If you go beyond that norm, then you've got excessive oil consumption. And that's something you would want to investigate. What are the main causes of excessive oil consumption? And does it really matter? Well, it does matter because the less oil you've got in the sump, the less lubricated the engine is going to be. It will generally lead to to a loss of oil pressure and can even damage the oil pump and other components within the engine as the lubrication is just not there. And if you're needing to top up regularly, it's very easy to miss that low spot, especially if your car isn't indicating that you're particularly low on oil and you're using the car at fairly high RPMs where it really does need that oil saturation inside. But let's look at some external causes of oil consumption, sort of things outside and around the engine. And then we're going to look at those things actually inside the engine that can lead to excessive oil consumption. Outside the engine, you've got the turbocharger and these have an oil channel to lubricate them. If that oil channel is starting to seep into the intake, that can cause the car to burn oil. Now, it's worth noting that in days gone by, you knew that your car was burning oil because it would be emitting lots of blue smoke from the exhaust. But with modern particulate filters and catalysts and all the pollution control systems that cars have, that may not be as evident because this blue smoke is essentially little particles in the exhaust stream that's coming out. And that will generally be captured within these particulate filters. So you may not have that early sign that the car is burning oil. You may just notice that the oil level is dropping. The turbo is obviously spinning at fairly high speeds and it's dealing with a lot of pressure. If those seals start to fail, it's very easy for the oil that was lubricating the turbo to squirt somewhere it wasn't meant to, to either leak out of the turbocharger or more likely to seep into the exhaust stream or into the intake stream where it's going to cause all sorts of problems within the engine. So that's something you want to get onto quite quickly. Now inside the engine, you've obviously got the oil pump and all of the channels that take the oil around the engine. But if the oil pump for some reason is operating at too high a pressure, that can cause the oil to seep past the seals and you'll have leaks or you'll have oil leaking into areas of the engine where you don't necessarily want it, either the combustion chambers or the coolant channels. You've also got the positive crankcase ventilation, which regulates the pressure inside the crankcase. Some of these positive crankcase valve designs actually create a situation where if you were to brake heavily under certain conditions, the oil inside the engine would wash up against the PCV and be squirted straight into the intake. So a lot of that is down to your, your driving style. The manufacturers have obviously assessed the risk of this happening, but it did seem to be a problem on certain engines. But the PCV is taking the vapors and air from inside the engine if that pressure is excessive and venting that into the intake. So that could be a natural way for the oil to start drifting into the intake where it is burnt inside the engine. And you'll notice the oil level dropping when that starts to happen. Now, moving into the engine itself, we start off with the head. So so the head really is where
where all of the air goes into the engine and the exhaust gases come yeah. out is controlled with little gates that are called valves. And those valves have little seals around them to make sure they're lubricated above the head. You don't want that oil coming into the combustion chamber. So if those valve stem seals start to leak, you'll have oil running down the valve stem and that'll be sucked into the engine and that can cause you to burn oil or to lose oil. The head gasket is quite an important one. It prevents the channels inside the engine from mixing. You've got the high pressure combustion chambers, you've got the water channels and you've got the oil channels and the gasket really is sealing all of those. So if that gasket starts to fail, you may well have the oil seeping into somewhere you don't really want it to be seeping into. And that's going to lead to quite a dramatic loss of oil over time. So the piston itself has three rings on it. Bear in mind that when the piston is cold, the clearances inside the engine are generally much wider. So there's more chance for the oil to get past the piston into the combustion chamber. Driving a car hard when it is cold and the metal hasn't fully expanded and those piston rings are not properly sealing against the cylinder walls is going to accelerate the oil consumption. If you've got a particularly high performance engine with forged components, that expansion and contraction can be even more dramatic and you can have a much more serious problem with oil seeping past these rings. Just quickly, those three rings on the engine, the bottom wavy one is called the oil control ring or the scraper ring. And that's really resulting in all of the excess oil that's been scraped off the cylinder wall being channeled back into the sump. So it regulates that and makes sure that it doesn't stick to the cylinder walls where it's going to start to burn inside the combustion chamber on the next combustion stroke. Above that, you've then got the wiper ring. This has got a tapered edge and it's designed to scrape the oil off the cylinder wall as the piston is coming down. So if that has started to become worn and it will wear more quickly if you drive hard on a cold engine, that's going to be a route for the oil to get up into the engine. That second ring also acts as a backup for the top ring, which is the compression ring. That ensures that the engine is able to compress the air charge and that doesn't escape into the crankcase where it's going to cause all sorts of problems. But if that starts to wear, that second ring acts as a bit of a backup. It just gives a little bit of extra security against those pressures escaping from the cylinder. If you were to use the wrong grade of oil, it may be too thin when it's cold. It may be too thin when it's hot. The engine may be running at higher temperatures than the manufacturer originally established as the baseline and the oil that you're using may be too thin at those higher temperatures. And those control rings and oil scraper rings are not going to be able to work as effectively because they've been designed with certain tolerances in mind. And this new thinner oil, because it's very hot and it's less viscous, has started to seep past those into the combustion chamber. So the big thing to watch out for is cold starts. Even a well-designed new engine will burn more oil if you drive it hard when it's cold before everything in the engine has expanded. I've done other videos that discuss the warm-up procedure for an engine to just maintain the reliability of your engine and ensure that you don't get these silly situations where the car is consuming excess amounts of oil. If this video has been useful to you, please boot that like button. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel. We'd hate you to miss out on all the great content that we've got coming up. Stay tuned and I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.